So E3 2017 is right around the corner and soon we'll get to feast our eyes upon some of that which is to come in 2018, plus the rest of what this year has to offer, which looking at what's released already you'd think not much, but there's plenty of titles yet to come, too bloody many in all honesty and I'll be even more surprised if we don't see more join the 2017 release list, there may be some surprises in store this E3. E3 has been pretty strong these past couple of years and I don't expect anything less for this year, at least so far and for the main two or three showcases. There's a lot to look forward to from Saturday the 10th of June to possibly Thursday the 15th, and if all goes well we could be looking at an even greater year for gaming. Hello everyone, I am Redbeak Raven and welcome to a discussion video on E3 2017. In this video I'll be going through my predictions, expectations and wishes for this year's E3. I'll go through the conferences and what games I'd like to make an appearance at E3 in general. Anyways, let's get on with it. So let's begin with where E3 may start for some of us and that is EA's show on Saturday the 10th of June. Now I've never and really don't care a great deal about EA E3 and that shouldn't really be surprising but because they have Star Wars I'm interested. Ever since they closed Pandemic Studios, Star Wars is really the only reason I even pay attention to EA. There are only two things on my list that I want to mention about Electronic Arts at E3 this year and the first is an expectation which is that we'll see some real proper Battlefront 2 not that one gameplay. Battlefield 1 was all over EA's conference last year and I'm expecting the same for Star Wars Battlefront 2. I'll be surprised if they don't market this as much as they possibly can. I like the sound of Battlefront 2 so far but words can only excite and intrigue for so long. They have stated that Battlefront 2 will be there so I expect to see some single player gameplay and probably a bunch of multiplayer as well. The second thing is a prediction but also a wish and that is that they'll show more of visceral Star Wars game. The game's not expected to come out until next year so if it doesn't appear at this year's E3 that could signify that it could be out late 2018. We know that it's a third person action game and may very well be similar to the Uncharted titles. There's a possibility that it has an open world level design which for a Star Wars game is enough to grab my interest and hype. There's talk of it being a Han Solo game which I don't know if I like or not but there's potential there I suppose, especially if we can fly and or walk around the Millennium Falcon and use it as a player home. Sorry I'm speculating now. Anyways, very interested in this title. Even though it's not Star Wars 1313 I would love for there to be one day another open world Star Wars RPG, but as long as EA holds the cards, well, let's just say I get the feeling they're not interested in another Knights of the Old Republic for some reason or another. There's also things like a new need for speed, but most racing games out there don't hold my attention for very long. I like the 2012 Most Wanted game, but haven't really enjoyed a racing game since Burnout Paradise and the Midnight Club days. So let's move on to Microsoft. They are coming in on Sunday the 11th, hours before the Big B conference. Bethesda. I don't know why I called them that. So the elephant in the room for this conference is obviously, unless you haven't heard about it, which I know quite a lot of gamers actually haven't, is the Xbox Scorpio. We know, expect or predict that this will be the focus of Microsoft's show this year, and that has gotten some people worried, and rightly so. People are nervous about Microsoft turning this conference into a hardware showcase, where only a small segment of it is dedicated to actual software, which at the end of the day, hardware's nice if you have the software to back it up. No decent games means very little incentive to buy new hardware. Though they came out with the Xbox Game Pass recently for the Xbox One which sounds like an excellent service, but I wouldn't buy a Scorpio for that, assuming it will support that. And buying a new console to play old games, that's completely fine, there's nothing wrong with that, but it does tell you something. It's no secret Sony are nailing it in the exclusive department where Microsoft seems to be lacking. I personally don't really like exclusives, but I know that they make consoles successful. Now so far, Microsoft's new games list is looking a bit special but there is one title I'll be expecting to see a nice chunk of, and that is State of Decay 2. So I have mixed feelings about the first one. I like the approach it took to the open world zombie apocalypse title, the scavenging for resources, setting up a base, keeping it maintained, and also providing for its inhabitants. The sense of hopelessness the game gave you was spot on, though the characters could have been more interesting and unique, plus those side missions were an absolute joy killer. I swear, somewhere along the development phase, the spawning of side missions just gained a 
mind of its own. They were out of control and all over the place. Anyway, so State of Decay 2 will most likely be at Microsoft's E3 conference, and I'll be interested in seeing more of it, and how it may, and hopefully, be better than the first. A prediction here, however, is that we'll see more of Middle-earth Shadow of War. If Shadow of War is anywhere at E3, I would guess it would be there at Microsoft's conference, as well as on the show floor. Now the reason for that is, Shadow of War's marketing is being handled by Microsoft, so you could almost expect it to be at the conference, at the very least a trailer we've already seen. If they show the Scorpio in action, then Shadow of War would be a perfect title to display, as it is one of the first games that will support the Xbox Scorpio. So now we come to Bethesda. Strap yourselves in because this segment will be a long one. Beginning yet again on Sunday, Monday, the 11th or 12th, Bethesda are back for their E3 conference. Now even though their conference last year wasn't as good as the first for very good reasons, I mean Doom, Fallout 4, it was quite difficult to top. It was still entertaining and for a company that hasn't been doing this type of thing for very long, they know how to do a conference and even hype one up. They very cleverly tease two unannounced games and show us what could be at their showcase this year with a really good theme park map design. I don't know about you but if Bethesda Land was real I'd be ecstatic. So in light of that let's get on with what I wish, predict and expect to see at Bethesda's E3 press conference this year. Now for the most part we are just looking at the teaser Bethesda posted because it does give us a good idea on what to expect and it is jam packed with titles. So we have Fallout and there are two things I will say on this. The first is my expectation. I expect we'll see Fallout 4 VR in action, a demo of a sort. They've been working on it for a while and it is interesting but I've never experienced VR myself so I can't really offer much else on that. The second thing though is a wish of mine. Now a new Fallout game from Bethesda is very unlikely but not impossible I suppose but that isn't my wish. Well I, I would love that but it's not the wish in question. What I would absolutely love to see would be a Fallout RPG made by someone else. Not specifically Obsidian by the way. It's been a long time since New Vegas and the team doesn't consist of those that worked on that. Though that's not to say the team there now don't have talent, which they do and a lot of it. However, I wouldn't say no to another type of Fallout game. I made a video last year discussing the concept of a Fallout RTS title and the potential it could have. I would love to see Fallout come to the strategy genre or maybe even other genres, but I think it's unlikely we'll see Fallout move out of the RPG and shooter areas. Though it did come to the simulation side of things with Fallout Shelter, so you never know. Speaking of Fallout VR, there's also Doom VR, so I expect we'll see that as well, but in regards to Doom as it is, I would love for them to announce some single player DLC or an expansion similar to what the original Doom, Doom 2 and 3 had. I don't think this is something I'd predict because there have been indications that id Software were only planning on releasing multiplayer DLC, but that may have been before the campaign got praised to high heaven and the multiplayer component shot down by a lot of people. I could predict that they'll announce an expansion, but something tells me that's it for Doom 2016, and they are moving on with the next one, if there's to be a next one, which I have no doubt there will be. However, if they are making content such as that which Machine Games made, the Wolfenstein The Old Blood standalone expansion, then it could very well be that it's taken them a good while to make. That would be a great way to go about extra single player content for Doom. Now speaking of Wolfenstein, last year at Bethesda's E3, they teased Wolfenstein The New Colossus, the possibly titled next game in the Wolfenstein series that Machine Games are currently working on. Now it's more of an expectation of mine than it is a prediction that one of the two unannounced titles Bethesda have in their pocket is this new Wolfenstein game. We know Machine Games are working on it, they most definitely teased the damn thing last year, it's been over two years since the old blood, so it's realistic and makes sense for it to be announced and possibly even released this year. It's also a wish of mine. I've only just started playing the new order and I am thoroughly enjoying it so far. So for now, I can see myself looking forward to a new Wolfenstein game. Also, it may make the old blood go on sale. See, always thinking ahead. Now for Dishonored 2. It is both a wish and expectation that there will be some DLC announced for the game. I enjoyed my experience with Dishonored 2. Not as much as the first one, but I still had a lot of fun. A decent sequel, if not the most technically sound one. I'd predict the DLC would be something similar to what we saw for the first Dishonored, but I can't say I was a fan of the Challenges DLC. To be honest, I'm struggling to think of what the DLC could be for Dishonored 2. And talking of Arcane Studios, we also have Prey. Now I've yet to actually play the game, I just haven't had the time, but anyways I expect that we'll see something of it. Though maybe it's best to just predict that they'll announce DLC for it. I think it still might be too early to talk about DLC, it's only been over a month since it came out and depending on what they are working on, it could take months and months before DLC is ready. But Prey will probably be there in some form, however if there's DLC to release this year then it makes sense for them 
them to announce it at E3. So my argument for it being too early to talk about it is just... Forget that. Right, let's move on to the Elder Scrolls. So I think we can safely say that we can expect both the Elder Scrolls Online and Skyrim to make an appearance, based off the teaser. I don't really have much of an idea what we could see from ESO, other than an acknowledgement of the release of the Morrowind expansion, but it could be that they have even more content to announce that may come later this year. As for Skyrim though, I think its appearance will most likely be its Switch release. You know, that Skyrim Switch version priced at around 60 quid, and it's about $60 in the States. The one that's not even even the remastered version? Yeah that one. I don't actually think this will be at the conference. I see very little reason why it would be, but it'll probably be at E3 in general. Possibly at Nintendo Shindig. There could be something for the Elder Scrolls Legends, but I've yet to try it out, so I have no idea what the future has in store for that game. Though, a wish of mine as a collector would be for Bethesda to actually sell physical cards, and I honestly would love it if they did the same for Fallout Shelter. No, seriously, I would very much like to actually be able to purchase physical cards of those you see in the game. The cards could have codes that allow you to obtain the item the card is of in the game, and there could even be cute little vault lunch lunchboxes with cards in. I'm getting off track again. Apart from those, though, I don't see there being anything else in store for the Elder Scrolls. Unless... Now, apart from a new Wolfenstein game, there are only two solid guesses as to what the second unannounced title could be. Either The Evil Within 2, or one of these three new titles from Bethesda Games, Studios. Now I would love it to be an Elder Scrolls game, even a spin-off, but come on, let's not be that optimistic because, well, one, the surprise would be even better if there was, and two, even with an expanded team, roughly two, three years maybe, isn't really long enough for them to make one. At least the Elder Scrolls 6 anyways, but you never know. I'm sorry, I can't help it, you never know, you honestly never know. It's doubtful though considering what they are apparently working on but you never know. Now it's hard for me to make a prediction here because of how likely it is to be either one of them. We know Bethesda Game Studios is working on three new projects. The one we can more or less be confident about is this Starfield, as that is the only one we really know anything about. And bear in mind, that's based on nothing but a trademark. However, if I remember right, one of those projects was stated to be a mobile game. Regardless, I would very much like to see BGS come out with something this year. I would predict that if the possibility of the Evil Within 2 wasn't there. Rumours of the Evil Within 2 have circulated the internet for a while now, but the only hint we've ever had it's in development is a supposedly leaked job listing earlier this year. Coming in from a NeoGAF post is the information of a position for QA and translation for Psycho Break 2, Psycho Break being the Japanese title for The Evil Within. Pete Hines also talked about the possibility of a sequel, and Bethesda doesn't seem to have dropped the IP, or even its developers Tango Gameworks, which have been very quiet for some time, so it's possible that The Evil Within 2 could be announced this year. In all honesty though, I have more confidence in my prediction that these two unannounced titles will be the new Wolfenstein game and the Evil Within 2. The only wish I have in that case then is that we get an unexpected surprise from BGS, which let's face it would be the kind of thing we could see them doing, so that means it's not that much of a surprise then, doesn't it? Well it is, but just show us Starfield Bethesda. Alright, let's move on to Ubisoft. Oh good old Ubisoft. So Ubisoft at E3 haven't ever been a big highlight for me. Is it really that surprising. Last year there were some decent titles, though some turned out not so decent, but overall it was one of the weaker conferences. And I wouldn't expect much to change this year, but it does need to. And they've got some interesting titles to show off, but the downside is that they probably won't release until next year. So there are really only three things for me here and they are all expectations. Let me begin with what I'm most interested in, and it would be that their new Far Cry game. Far Cry 5 was announced at the end of May and was met with a a heap of controversy, if you want to call it that. Surprise, surprise, welcome to the second decade of the 21st century of the Anno Domini era, where people get mad at video game villains being the same nationality, religion, and colour as them. I mean, it's that in a nutshell, isn't it, really? Oh, humanity, you never cease to amaze and or disappoint. This is why aliens will probably never bother with us. They'll look down on us and say, pathetic. Anyway, Far Cry 5, yes, I am actually a little bit excited for a new Far Cry game. I haven't been excited for one since number 3, Far Cry 4 was more of the same and therefore didn't draw me in that much, Primal, I like Ubisoft's risk taking, do something different, but that in particular didn't really register with me, plus I'm not a fan of the less than 2 year wait for the next title. It got very close to becoming a yearly thing, and I'm glad Ubisoft finally realised with Assassin's Creed that that's not a good thing. So yes, I expect an 
and really want to see more of Far Cry 5 at Ubisoft C3 conference this year. I like the look of it so far, I like the sound of it, and all this controversy surrounding it is just furthering my interest in the game. And if that goes for more people out there than just me, then it just goes to show that controversy actually more often than not makes things or people even more popular. Right, let's get to probably the big, big thing Ubisoft has to show off this year, and that is the return of Assassin's Creed. So like I said, Ubisoft finally decided to abandon their yearly release plan for the series, and really take their time with the next one. It was clear to me at least, after Black Flag and Unity, that they needed to take a step back and take another look at the franchise. I haven't played Syndicate, I can never bring myself to play it, but I know it's regarded as a better game, but still isn't up to scratch with previous titles. For me, the series started to dip around number 3, though I did enjoy that game for the most part. I could even go further back by saying my interest dipped with Revelations. Loved Ezio and his storyline, but that was a game I played just for the last few hours of the story, and of course Desmond's path as well as what happened to Altair. From there though, it went downhill for me until Black Flag. However, the only reason I really loved Black Flag was because it was a very good pirate game, just not a good Assassin's Creed one, if that makes sense. And then we had the atrocity which was Unity, and then my faith just flew away like an eagle atop a Ubisoft tower. I realise I'm rambling now, so yes, this is another expectation of mine, that we'll see an official announcement and gameplay reveal of the next Assassin's Creed. From the sounds of it, if all we've heard is true, it may be a very enjoyable game, though I have my concerns. I'm interested in seeing how they've tackled the present day stuff. What they did with it in Black Flag and Unity just felt like they were forcing it in and had no idea where they wanted to go with it. Plus, I think we've all at one point reached a section in the games where we didn't want to go back to the present day just yet, or if at all for some people. I wonder if this is actually a reimagining of the franchise, which I could honestly get behind. Another concern though is the map. We've heard talk of it being Skyrim level big, but that doesn't mean much to me if it turns out to be just another open world Ubisoft game chock full of collectibles, repetitive side missions, and bloody towers. As long as the map isn't too big for its own good and has decent content in it, you can't go wrong. Well, not too wrong anyways. The last thing I want to mention for Ubisoft's E3 is The Crew 2. This is a game that I expect to be shown at E3, it was announced in May, and it's supposed to release any time between E3 and early next year. The Crew was a racing game with a lot of promise that ultimately became an underwhelming title. Microtransactions, technical issues, poor AI in some instances, a story I'm not sure it really needed, but as a fan of narrative I appreciated the effort. But it lost so much potential. It seemed that The Crew was one of those games both critics and gamers share similar thoughts on. Hopefully though, Ubisoft has taken the feedback on board and made the racing title that the crew could have been, and also shoved microtransactions back up the greedy rump cave whence it came. I'd also predict that we'll see DLC for a few other games they've pumped out recently, For Honor, Ghost Recon Wildlands, and probably The Division. I would like to see more smaller titles from them, like what they did with Valiant Hearts. Despite the reputation Ubisoft has, and they do deserve it to an extent, they can dish out good content and I I hope from here on out, they start changing the way they think and operate, and stop edging towards the EA and Activision box which for some people they are already in. So let's move on to the company that is tearing up the console space with its impressive library of excellent games, apparently. It's been a while since I've played a game on my PS4. Sony of course were the talk of E3 last year, they came out with quite an entertaining conference in 2016. It was just game after game after game. Some nice surprises, God of War, Crash Bandicoot Remastered, a live orchestra, yeah, yeah, it was an excellent conference, and I would expect the same this year, perhaps even better. But then again, it could be a last generation Sony E3 showcase all over again. Suffice it to say, they had their moments in the past. So, wishes, expectations, and predictions for Sony's E3 2017 conference. So I both wish and expect for more information and footage of the Spider-Man game from Insomniac Games. If there's one superhero that really works well in a video game, it's Spider-Man. For the most part, Spider-Man games have come in the form of those adapted from the films, with some narrative changes and character additions. This Spider-Man game, however, isn't, which could mean it's good, but unlike most game adaptations of films, the Spider-Man ones were actually very good. Some of them, not all of them. Spider-Man 3 didn't really go down well, and The Amazing Spider-Man 2 was shockingly worse than the first, which was a shame really, because The Amazing Spider-Man game was a pretty good one. Spider-Man 2, though, that had some of the best web-slinging I've ever seen in a game. As much as I would like Insomniac to return to the Resistance series, I I am happy they get to do this. So yeah, looking forward to most likely seeing and hearing more about this. Now the newest God of War game from SIE Santa Monica Studio was revealed at E3 last year and took quite a lot of people by surprise. It was known to be in development but no official word of it had 
have been heard for about a year and a half. Sony showed off an intriguing demo of the game, and as someone who's not actually ever played a God of War game, I am interested in this and seeing more of it. So I expect we'll see God of War this year, and I maybe even predict that they'll announce the release date. The next thing I expect to see at Sony's conference is something we've seen a fair bit of, but it's fallen under the radar for a lot of people, including me. Detroit Become Human is the latest title from Quantic Dream, the developers of the brilliant Heavy Rain and also Beyond Two Souls, and it's a game I keep forgetting about. It was, in my opinion, announced way too early. The game was announced at the end of 2015, and we still don't have any idea on when it will release. It was at Sony's conference last year, so I'm expecting we'll see it again this year, possibly alongside its release date reveal. I was a big fan of Heavy Rain, and I like the concept of this title, so I'm interested in it, for now. So another title I'm expecting to see here is the World War Z type zombie game Days Gone. I'm still on the search for that perfect zombie game, but I don't think this will be it. I mean, you're killing zombies by the hundreds in this, so already I can tell this won't be the one I want, but it piqued my interest. There are just so many zombies on screen that I cannot forget I saw it, so Days Gone is on the radar. Only just though. Perhaps this year we'll turn that around. Now as a fan of the Metal Gear series and just Hideo Kojima in general, how can you not be? He's just a cool fella. I am very interested in Death Stranding. It looks as weird as cheese flavoured gum and I love it. Not the cheesy gum, I meant Death Stranding. Cheese flavoured gum. That's just wrong. So I would both wish and predict that we'll see Death Stranding appear at Sony's E3 showcase this year. Why do I say predict instead of expect? Because the title apparently only just entered full development this year. Kojima's studio is a fairly small one, so I think, and this is taking a guess that Death Stranding is a big undertaking, that they need at least another year before they can say when the game is ready. I'll be surprised if the game releases before E3 2018. And of course, The Last of Us Part Ni, that's Japanese for two, is a highly desired product that I am very interested in playing, and one that I expect and wish to see at E3 this year. I really liked the first game, its world was nice to look at and explore, the narrative was great, it was overall a captivating experience that was unparalleled. Well, hopefully with The Last of Us Part 2, that will change. However, the first game set the bar quite high, and as we've seen in the past, that can really be a challenge for developers. Take out Last 1 and 2 for an example of that. The narrative is what really carried The Last of Us, so if Part 2 matches it there, and improves everything else that needed improving, then I'd say it's a straight win. Now that's the end of the conference's discussion. I don't own a Switch, so there's not much point in me talking about Nintendo, plus you know how they are with YouTube coverage, and they don't even do traditional press conferences, so there you go. You'll see Mario Odyssey and an overpriced Skyrim for the Switch. There's my expectations for that. So there are a few more games I want to talk about. Now I expect we'll see Destiny 2 somewhere at E3. If it makes an appearance at a conference, I'd hazard a guess it would be at Sony's. Destiny 2 is getting timed exclusive content on the PS4 because that's still a thing for reasons. It could signify a partnership of a sort. Bungie were in bed with Sony for the last game, so... Yeah. The same could be said for Call of Duty World War 2. I imagine more details about that will crop up and it'll most likely appear at Sony's conference, but it could also appear at Microsoft's, maybe even Nintendo, seeing as though there's a rumoured Switch version going around. Now a wish of mine that I don't have much faith in actually happening is that we'll hear and or see something on Cyberpunk 2077, the next role-playing game from CD Projekt Red, the developers behind the Witcher series. I like the sound of it so far and I like that particular subgenre, even though I aren't a fan of the Witcher series, in fact I've only played a little bit of two and will one day when I get the time try to play the third one, I am very interested in Cyberpunk 2077. It's stated to be the most ambitious project the developers have ever worked on, but I'm not banking on it being shown anytime soon. Information on the game is sparse and I think it's likely we'll hear more about it next year, but I'd love for it to be at E3 this year, even if it was just a smidge of gameplay. Okay, so the final thing is Red Dead Redemption 2. Now there are rumours of Red Dead Redemption 2 appearing at Sony's conference this year, but I wouldn't hold my breath. Rockstar very rarely appears at E3, and seeing as though the game was unsurprisingly delayed, I honestly see no reason for them to further the hype for a game that's either just under or over a year away. Spring release could mean anywhere from March to May, even June depending on where you live. I'm all for delays if it means the final product will be better, but this is something Rockstar does on a regular basis, and makes you wonder, or at least it makes me wonder, why even 
bother announcing the game so early. Yes, there are unforeseen events that can happen which ultimately cause delays, but the game was announced about a year before its initial release. Maybe it's time Rockstar joined some of the other companies in announcing games in the same year they are released. So it may be at E3, but I wouldn't count on it, so it's just a wish for me. Rockstar did say there would be more details about the game this summer, so that could mean E3, but it could also mean after it. Oh, and of course, another wish is the reveal of Half-Life 3 at E3. Oh yes, that old chestnut. Just bloody make it Valve, you... <sighs> One day. Maybe Death Stranding is Half-Life 3. <laughs> oh, what a twist that would be. Right, that is all I have for this video. Now, let me know in the comments below what are your thoughts on what I mentioned. What are you looking forward to this E3? And do you have any wishes or predictions of your own? Let me know in the comments. I'll be sure to read through them and reply when I can. So, hit the like button if you like this video. You can also follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook. The links to those you will find at the bottom of the description. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. That's all from me. So, until next time, I'll see you soon.